Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on. These are questions directed to each candidate, and um, I'm going to start with Mark. There seems to be a lot of confusion over your role in the government shutdown of 2013, a shutdown that, according to the WCU economist Steve Morris, cost the region over $33 million in visitor spending. What specifically was your role in the government shutdown, and if you had to do it all over again, is there anything you'd change about that, actually? You know, truly, as CNN reported that I was the architect of the shutdown, Tom has a copy of the letter, and nowhere in there does it say anything about the government shutdown. And in fact, if anything, it says that we need to keep the funding from one part of a law that had not been implemented, which was the Affordable Care Act. Tom has a plan that says he wants to have a government shutdown over cutting the funds to our military. Because that's, he said, you know, cut the appropriations to our military. And I think that that is not responsible. But if we start to look at this, you know, here's, here's what we've got to come up with. Did I write a letter? The answer is yes. Did I believe that the Affordable Care Act would, would be a problem in its rollout? The answer is yes. Did I believe that people would not be able to keep their home plan? The answer is yes. Did I also believe that they wouldn't be able to keep their doctor? The answer is yes. Did I believe that they would pay higher premiums? The answer is still yes. Did I believe that Harry Reid would be reasonable? That's where I was wrong. And if you want to suggest that this freshman congressman has more power than Harry Reid and can close down the, the government. So be it. I'm going to do a whole lot more for Western North Carolina if I've got that kind of power. You get two minutes. Uh, to, to respond. Two minutes? Yep. Okay. All right. That's a pretty good dance. Right? <laughs> the, the truth of the matter is, regardless of what, how Mark interprets the letter, it led to the shutdown. It led to the shutdown, and it was an uncompromising position. It was, it, Mark talks about bipartisanship and working together, and it was a group of Republicans who decided that they would hold the federal government hostage in order to defund Obamacare. They, they uh, essentially passed bills that, that overrode the ACA 40 times. 40 times they repealed it. They're just really sore losers. That's what, the bottom, that's what the bottom line is. Now, if the ACA is so bad, let's let it go to work and see what happens. From what I'm reading, there are of the order of 12 to 15 million people this day and time didn't have it when they, before the ACA was passed. So let's give it a chance. Now, as far as my comparison with military spending, I just want to take it out of the budget. There's a lot, there's a big difference between what Mark did and what I'm proposing. And yes, he was the architect of the shutdown. That's the truth of the matter. He got these guys signed up that they agreed that they would not raise the debt ceiling in, if, if the ACA was not uh, defunded. Now, I will vote I will vote to, to stop these this war spending. People say, well, it's going to be over. Is it? $80 billion is in the 2015 budget for Mideast contingency operations. $80 billion. I haven't heard a word about Mark taking some of that money away or any of the rest of the Republicans. Well, uh, Amber Light is on. Yeah, I'm probably going to say a lot more about that. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you have a minute to re uh, offer a rebuttal. Uh, you know, Tom talk keeps talking about the fact that there is no bipartisanship. You know, I've, I've co-sponsored more Democrat bills than anybody in the North Carolina delegation except for us. And that includes Democrats and Republicans. I passed through the House with a voice vote, unanimous, Republicans and Democrats, a bill that have, uh, dealt with human trafficking. I passed 404 to zero with the help of Debbie Wasserman Schultz, a bill that, that goes after Hezbollah, a terrorist organization. So, you know, to characterize that there is no bipartisanship, that's not accurate. The, the other part of that, the other part of that that, that I would, would respectfully say is this economist that, that points it out was using park service numbers. And I have great respect for him. He's a, a, a brilliant economist. But if you go to the Department of Revenue website, and I encourage you all to do that, for October of 2013 versus October of 2012, you will find that even during the government shutdown, we had a $30 million increase. Check it out. Thank you, Mike. We have a minute. 
Amen. All right. I, I, uh, I don't dispute that. I probably just spoke there. There is great bipartisanship when it comes to dropping bombs and blowing people up. There's a lot of bipartisanship on it, uh, with both parties. I'm looking for bipartisanship on things that, that affect our lives here in this country, like how, how to make jobs for people and how to get health insurance for people. There's no bipartisanship there. This, there the right-wing attack on the ACA is unprecedented. There's, no, there's been nothing like it. And so, so when Mark talks about, well, we've got all this bipartisanship, and, and I, you know, I, I can't keep up with all of these small bills, but I know this. I know that there are major issues before this country that are not being acted on, and it's our responsibility to do that. That's what Congress is supposed to do. This question is directed to you.